exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted forever, exalted, and I will praise His name. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dearest mother and family, all those connected to the social means of communication, what a grace it is to be in these holy days as tomorrow we begin the great novena to the Holy Spirit. We pray that our hearts may truly call upon this greatest of gifts, the living heart, the living power of God's kingdom. To celebrate worthily the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as we celebrate in mystery the solemnities of your Son's resurrection, so too we may be worthy to rejoice at his coming with all the saints. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The crowd in Philippi joined in the attack on Paul and Silas, and the magistrates had them stripped and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After inflicting many blows on them, they threw them into prison and instructed the jailer to guard them securely. When he received these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and secured their feet to a stake. About midnight, while Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God as the prisoners listened, there was suddenly such a severe earthquake that the foundations of the jail shook. All the doors flew open, and the chains of all were pulled loose. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, thinking that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted out in a loud voice, Do no harm to yourself. We are all here. He asked for a light and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you and your household will be saved. So they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to everyone in his house. He took them in at that hour of the night and bathed their wounds. Then he and all his family were baptized at once. He brought them up into his house and provided a meal, and with his household rejoiced at having come to faith in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. To this psalm we will respond, Your right hand saves me, O Lord. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. 
I will worship at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. Because of your kindness and your truth, you have made great above all things your name and your promise. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. Your right hand saves me. The Lord will complete what he has done for me. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. to you the spirit of truth says the lord he will guide you to all truth Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. the lord be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Now I am going to the one who sent me, and not one of you asks me, Where are you going? But because I told you this, grief has filled your hearts. But I tell you the truth, it is better for you that I go. For if I do not go, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world in regard to sin and righteousness and condemnation. Sin, because they do not believe in me. Righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will no longer see me. Condemnation, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon, everyone. Good, Good afternoon, afternoon, Father. A wise person once said, I can understand how someone might struggle with the idea of the existence of God, but how could you struggle with the idea of the existence of evil? When you look at our own world, the Gospel of John tells us that evil is real, that, that evil has a power, in fact. It's a personified power, and evil works through the flesh, and it works through the world. And the only way to make it, then, in this world is to have a power within us that's greater than the world, that's greater than the flesh, and that requires our death. And so, in the gift of baptism, we die with Christ Jesus to the powers of this world. And the Easter season is given to us to learn how to live in the new world. And the new world is not a geographic place. The new world is the person of Christ. St. Paul will write in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, There is now therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has liberated you from the law of sin and death. Christ Jesus is the kingdom. And the Lord invites us to learn to live from him and find our strength in him. And that strength and that relationship with Christ risen is the life in the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that animates us to even have the mind of Christ, the heart of Christ, the logic of Christ and the freedom of Christ. And that freedom isn't necessarily something predictable. It's a freedom that will take us to the extremities of love that we learn as the Holy Spirit grows within us. Acts of the Apostles is a living testimony. It is like a living workshop of discovering what life in the Holy Spirit is. And St. Paul is one of the greatest witnesses. 
Here is the man that persecuted the church that was willing to take someone's life because they disagreed with him, who was willing to publicly orchestrate the execution of an innocent man for hatred. And now the Holy Spirit has recomposed the heart, the mind, and the logic of this man. He's in prison now in Philippi, and according to Roman law, a jailer was to guard those in prison for Rome at the price of his own life. This meant that a jailer could do whatever he wanted as long as those that were under Roman authority stayed in jail. There were no rights, there were no standards, there's no hygiene requirements, there's not even food in a Roman jail. If you needed food, your friends or family had to bring you food. Otherwise, you just starved to death in the Roman jail. To keep them in this jail, the jailer very creatively decided to chain each one of them to a large stake, and he nails the stake very likely into the side of a cliff where the jail is constructed in Philippi. The jailer locks everybody up, he locks the jail, and he goes home at the end of the day, and there's an earthquake. But there are three earthquakes in the first reading. The first is the physical earthquake. It shakes the jail, and so now the pins that are holding the chains are lifted, and the prisoners are free. The gates fly open. Anyone in their right mind realizes if the pins are up and the door is open, it's time to get out of jail. But there was another earthquake that had already occurred. And it was the earthquake of the Holy Spirit in the heart and the mind of Paul of Tarsus. Paul has been shattered in his past life. And Jesus has recreated him for a new life. He has a new logic now. And imagine the love and the heart of Paul to speak to all the prisoners and say, well, everybody knows what's going to happen if we leave tonight, don't we? We all know that it's going to cost the jailer his life because that's what the Romans will do to him. And so as far as me and Silas, we're going to stay here tonight. And if the rest of you want to stay, we're going to spend the night praising the Lord and praying for our jailer. Because when Jesus taught us the gospel, he said, blessed are the poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of heaven, and bless those who persecute you and love your enemies. Be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. The jailer comes the next morning, and he is ready to take his own life. He's ready to take his own life because he expects that there are no longer prisoners in the jail. And then Paul cries out, don't touch yourself, don't harm yourself. There's a love in the heart of Paul now that his whole life has been moved, as our mother founders teaches us, not to have sensitivities, which would be self-referential, but to have sensibility to what the needs of those in my life are. And the sensibility is this man should meet Christ and not meet death. And that leads us to the third earthquake. The third earthquake is that the Roman jailer goes into the prison cell, not afraid of those he's imprisoned, and he bows down before them asking for mercy. It is a totally new civilization. He then invites them to his own home. He appeals to them, and when he takes them into his own home, he himself washes the wounds. The good Samaritan now is the Roman jailer, who's never encountered love like this. And all that he knows is that he didn't know love before, and these men know what love is. And he wants to live like that. And the response for that to his question is, believe, repent, and you will be saved in the name of Jesus. When you hand your heart and your life and your mind, your difficulties and impossibilities over to Christ, he can even transform the most impossible situation, a Roman jail, to become a place that is a refuge and a proclamation of the gospel. We know that the only jails that are out there are not in Philippi. And the jail that Jesus wants us to break free of is the one that we each have inside.
And it's the gift of the Holy Spirit that invites us not to depend on our logic, not to depend on our preferences or even our feelings, emotions, or thoughts, but to ask the Holy Spirit to think for us, to ask the Holy Spirit to direct us away from the sensitivities and into the sensibilities to the needs of those that are in our life, to be able to see more and to trust that God gives us the grace to love more. Let us conclude with these words of our mother founders. It is up to us to speak of Christ to the world so that it may know him and be conquered by the power of his love. This is the love that can do all things and redeems all things. This is the love that reveals the splendor of his truth, which is the only truth that will set the human heart free. All for the heart of Jesus. Dearest mother and family, all those connected to the social means of communication, trusting in our Heavenly Father's merciful love and the power of the Holy Spirit to give us the mind of Christ, we present our prayers and our petitions. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church, for the Pope, for Archbishop Thomas Wensky, for the Cardinal Patriarch of Jerusalem and his protection, and for all the bishops in the diocese where we serve and will serve, we pray to the Lord. For our mother foundress, in profound thanksgiving for continually guiding us to the truth of who we are called to be. We pray for her health, her talks in Poland, Ireland, Tampa, her trip to receive her honorary doctorate, third honorary doctorate degree in UST, for her physical and spiritual protection, for all of her discernments and intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our religious, spiritual, and biological families for the health of Sister Carmen and the efficaciousness of her treatments, for Sister Maria Sagrario's renewal of vows retreat, for the leadership retreat Sister Lucia is leading, for our protection, for our sisters in Paraguay, for the vocational immersion week, for our Veritati Splendor Institute, for the young knights of the pierced hearts and the young ladies of Our Lady, and for the fecundity of all of our apostolic works. We pray to the Lord. For an increase of healthy vocations to masculine and feminine religious life. For the final permit for Our Lady of Nazareth, Novice House. For our vocational groups, go to Joseph, Heart of John, Nazareth, Thea, and Philomena. And for all the young men and women discerning with our religious family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For an increase of vocations to the priesthood in our archdiocese. For St. Vincent de Paul Major Seminary, its mission seminarians and faculty. For the University of Mary, Catholic Distance University, and the Augustine Institute. For the protection of Grand Canyon University. For Father Brian, the priest and parishioners of St. Michael the Archangel Parish in the Archdiocese of Kansas City. And for the Acts 29 Ministry, Paradisus Day, and Shuck Communities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. In thanksgiving for all of our benefactors, their protection, intentions, and families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the end to all forms of violence, for peace in the entire world, for the protection of all soldiers, especially Jacob Martinez, Gabriel Sonier, Peter John Jude, Fernando Labrada, of all innocent civilians and of sacred places, for the health of all babies, especially for Francisco, Owen, Lucas, Heleni, Victoria, Ella, Alexander, Alejandra's baby, and Mariana, for the protection of all children and adolescents from human trafficking, for the end to religious persecution and for the protection of the world from war, economic recession, corruption, and natural disasters, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who entrust themselves to our prayers, for abundant blessings for Amelita Montilla Courtney, Father Marcelo Solorzano, Ana Sofia Alvarez, and Julio Vigili on their birthdays today, for Mitchell and Lourdes Yager on their wedding anniversary today, for the intentions of the Irastoraza family, 
Priscila, Miriam, Patricia, Pablo, Luis, Guillermo, Julia, Mario, Antonio, Ana Maria, Maria Jose, Maria Paz, and Alexandra. For the pregnancies of Caitlin, Lourdes, Noel, Cassandra, Dominique, Milena, Marianne, Rebecca, Gloria, Annie, Michelle, Camila, Maria Jose, Josefina, Kelly, Chiara, Carelis, Mia, Alejandra, Daniela, Maria, Meredith. For the health of all the sick, especially for Angelica, Marcia, Maria Elena, Ellie, Guaro, Coqui, Mayrita, Remington, Violeta, Dina, Mariela, Teresa, Pedro, Rocío, Alejandra, Yami, David, Precia, Annie, Lira, Maria Odette, Nora, Julian, Dani, Margarita, Nieves, Sergio, Luigi, Amalia, Natalia, Luisa Costa, Jose, Doña Julita, Maya, Evangelina, Kate, Socorro, Deacon Vicente, Henry said Kane, Tere, Camila, Diego, Jorge, Ofelia, Geisa, Aurelio, Ibis, Marilu y León, Joe. And we give thanks for a special grace that Maximiliano received today, and we pray for his health, for peace for Andy Downey and Patricia Arguello as they prepare to encounter the Lord, for the souls of our deceased benefactors, the souls in purgatory, and for the eternal repose of all the faithful departed, especially for Luis Tapia, Giancarlo Villasmil, and Emma Heinrich. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Good and gracious Father, you're rich in mercy. Increase in us the power of the Holy Spirit that we might think with the logic of love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 51 in the bilingual section. Pray, dearest mother and family, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, 
at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, especially Bishop Peter Muick, Giancarlo Villasmil, Luis Tapia, Emma Heinrich, Elaine, Maria Luisa Gallo, Lilia, Emerito, Esteban, Gladys, Euro, Meli, Flor, Irma, Raul, Chris, Gloria, Ali, Teresa, Hans, Ronald, Jeff, Anita, Russell, Thomas, Andrew, Brent, Danny, Mariano, Dolores, Leonel, Georgina, Michael, Caleb, Paul, Jack, Bill, for the souls of our deceased benefactors, the souls in purgatory, 
the souls that have died tragically, unexpectedly, and for more. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. <laughs> Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the, the sins, sins of the, the world. world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 55 in the bilingual section.
Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And And with with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. We give thanks to San Michael the Archangel that we pray for Maximilian last yesterday that he may be open to receive the sacraments as to prepare to meet the Lord. We give thanks to San Michael and to the Blessed Mother for the grace that he confessed, received communion, and opened his heart totally to be at peace with the Lord that the Lord may prepare him through the power of his divine mercy for his encounter with him. We also pray for a special intention of Father Yamas and for his protection. San Michael the Archangel, defend us us in in battle. battle.
the blessing of the blessed sacrament. Open our hearts to receive the light of Christ. to illumine our consciences, our minds, and our hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit. 